Hey friends, I am so excited about today's video. I'm gonna be talking to you about the no BS way to become a freelancer. So there's really three major points you need to know when it comes to freelancing. And the very first point is where do you even start? And for me, I kind of stumbled into this point and got really fortunate that in 2015, 2016, I started learning about YouTube and that means filming and editing and social media in general. And it was a really long time before I felt really confident on camera, before I learned how to edit well, before I even knew what a thumbnail was. But over time, I learned all of those skills along with other things like graphic design and Instagram and other social media platforms. And because of all of this knowledge, when an opportunity presented itself, I was able to apply for it and create a portfolio and show I've taught myself these skills over the last X amount of years. But for you, where you are right now is the perfect place to start. So there's really two different types of freelancers and I actually do both. So one, you can use an existing skill that you have. Maybe it's accounting or social media or web design and you can offer your services to an existing business or brand. So you would work as a contractor for that business or brand and they would pay you X amount per hour to complete that specific role or task they hired you to do. The other type of freelancer is you running your own business. So you offering website design services or you offering social media services or bookkeeping services, etc under your own business name. So you would be then seeking out clients and then working directly with those clients versus having one client who's having you do all of that just for them. So like I said, I do both. I have one major client, Katie Steckley, and I'm not only the operations manager of her social media agency, so I run a team, and that team works with various clients on their social media platforms. But outside of that, I work one-on-one -on -one with clients as well. I have been hired for a website design service. Even currently, I'm working with a local business, helping them with their social media and event planning. So with freelancing, it's really trading your hours for money, right? So you need to have a skill that somebody would be willing to pay you to do for them. Them. And so the best place to start is making sure that you're learning these various skills or enhancing skills that you already have and really packaging those together into a service you can offer to people. So before really reaching out to anyone or trying to get new clients, you really need to build a portfolio and that's really going to showcase your service and your skill set that you have to offer other people. And if you have questions about what should be included in your portfolio, comment below and I'd be happy to help. So the next step is learning how to attract clients. And I found that the best way to attract clients is really putting yourself out there, doing the service or the task that you're wanting to get paid to do. So for me, I was posting on social media, on YouTube, on Instagram, and creating content. And really, my social media accounts on their own was a testament to the skill sets that I had. I could edit videos, I could edit short form content, I could create graphics. So for you, even if it's not social media, you could still be putting yourself out there under that niche or topic on social media. So you could start simple and maybe start building an Instagram account where you're sharing the tips and advice of the topic that you're talking about. So let's use bookkeeping as an example. I have not only a CPA, which is an accountant, but also a bookkeeper, somebody that can go into my QuickBooks and just clean it up because it's a mess always. And I pay those people separately. The person that is my accountant or my CPA, she works for a normal business and gets paid her normal hourly rate through this business that I think she actually part owns. But with my bookkeeper, she has a professional trade. She has a job that she does for an actual company, like a corporate job. And then she is freelancing doing bookkeeping on the side. Now, how I learned about her was actually word of mouth. The client I have, Katie, uses the same bookkeeper. She shared her information with me and I got connected. But outside of that, she is putting herself out there as a bookkeeper. And you could create content on Instagram showing different tricks on how to use QuickBooks, attracting somebody, maybe a potential client, on these little tips, these little nuggets of information through your content on how to do this themselves. But then they realize, wow, she actually offers services and it's a reasonable rate. Why don't I just hire her monthly to do my bookkeeping for me? Another way that you can find clients, and this is how I actually have found 
the majority of the clients that I have had in the past and Katie as well was really just following the people you would want to maybe eventually work with. So following the brands, following the content creators, and really just keeping an eye out on their websites and also tapping through their stories. I don't know what it is about content creators, but a lot of times if they are offering a job, they will first post it in their stories before ever announcing it elsewhere. So if you really wanna be on top of it and you wanna catch that first wind of a freelancing position coming up, through the brands or the businesses that you love, then make sure to tap through their stories. I'm not even joking. Another way that you can put yourself out there and attract clients, of course, still putting yourself out there, showing you have the skill sets, building your portfolio and all of that, but then going to networking events, reaching out to people maybe in your local area that you used to go to school with, connect with them, tell them what you're doing. And a lot of times word of mouth or just that networking will help land you clients. So here's a couple examples of how I've done that. I actually am doing a little bit of free freelancing for a local business like I mentioned earlier and the way I actually got this freelancing gig was just chatting with an old friend from school somebody that I used to go to slumber parties with and we were just chatting about the different things that we are doing right now we both have kids now I asked what she was doing for work she asked me what I was doing for work and then once I mentioned what I was doing she said you know hey I'm a director at this company and we really need to help with this do you want to help us and I'm like yeah absolutely and I'm helping them now. So, you know, just really being yourself, being vulnerable and talking about what it is that you do and offer and you'll be surprised who really needs help with that. Another great example of just networking and putting yourself out there, we have a friend, my husband and I, and he is in real estate and he goes to these networking events. And a lot of those people at these networking events will talk about, hey, I'm trying to build a social media or I'm trying to do this and I really could use support and help. Do any of you have recommendations of somebody who offers these services? And our friend will tell them about me and give them my contact information and essentially just be like providing me leads over time. There are also multiple job boards out there who will list freelancing opportunities. And I do have a freelancing guide in my work for yourself bundle, which I will have in the description. And in that guide has a list of a few of those job boards, as well as tons of other information about putting yourself out there, building your portfolio, coming up with your pricing and all of that. So check it out. Speaking of pricing, the next step is what do you do when a client actually reaches out? How do you go about signing them on as a client and moving forward with the services. So it's important before you ever even put yourself out there that you have services, that you have a game plan and I guess a package of some sort that you're going to be offering these people. And so one, I would make sure that you have essentially a proposal ready, some sort of document, you can make it in Canva that lists out the services you offer, what those services include and the cost associated with them. So if somebody reaches out saying, hey, I heard you have XYZ service. How can I go about learning more about what you offer? You could send them this proposal document or use it as a base for yourself to send them an official proposal. Outside of that, you will also need a contract. You don't wanna work with anyone as a freelancer without an independent contractor contract of some sort. And there are a couple different platforms out there that have these for you and you can essentially buy the contract and then fill out the information and i'll have a couple of those resources linked below for you if you are curious and then you also need to be prepared for how you're going to charge people are they going to send you payment through paypal do you have some sort of invoicing system like quickbooks where you can send an invoice to them there's various different ways you can go about getting money from them but something i'm going to recommend right from the start is having a separate checking account specifically for your business because it is so important to keep these things separate if you're really going to pursue this as a career and as a potential way say you can quit your job someday or something like that you want to make sure that you keep all of these expenses and all of the income that you're getting from your freelancing business separate from say your regular income or your regular expenses like household expenses because once you make enough money outside of a certain threshold you will have to pay taxes and this is going to be different for every single state and i don't even know anything about other countries and when it comes to that information i would definitely look for a tax expert or a cpa to make sure you're not doing anything illegal and you're doing everything by the book contract 
proposal. Now, as I said, if you wanna dive a little bit deeper into freelancing, I have an entire freelancing guide within my work for yourself bundle, which I will have linked below. But if you like this type of video, please let me know. I could talk about freelancing for hours and go a lot deeper into each of these areas, and I'd be happy to do that. So just let me know in the comments. And for now, watch this video. And as always, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.